Miss Wing here. Today I'm going to be using some ingredients from the kitchen, such as flour and salt, because we're going to be creating some handmade Play-Doh, or what I like to call baker's dough. Today's lesson is inspired by the famous artist Ruth Asawa. Many know Ruth Asawa for her wire sculptures, but she also has other sculptural work, including the Ruth Asawa San Francisco Fountain, located here in San Francisco in Union Square next to the Apple Building. From afar, this sculpture doesn't look like much, but if you get up close, you'll see fun details that animate the city, such as the Golden Gate Bridge and Lombard Street. Today, the fountain is cast in metal, but originally, Ruth Asawa sculpted it using baker's dough. Before you begin today's activity, it's important that you have an adult around for supervision. For the baker's dough recipe, you will need flour, salt, and water. If you want to add a little color to your baker's dough, you can add some food coloring. So let's go, follow me. To start making my recipe, I'm gonna have a bowl ready and I'm gonna measure out two cups of flour. One cup, two cups. Next, I'm going to add salt. I will need half of a cup. It's very salty. I'm gonna mix these dry ingredients up with my hand. Next, I'm gonna add warm water. You want it to be fairly warm and you're going to add it a little bit at a time. And then you're going to use your hands and you're going to mix up that flour and salt and water together. Your hands are going to get a little dirty and that's okay. Next I'm going to knead out my dough. First I like to put a little bit of flour on a cutting board and I'm going to knead my dough, just like you would need maybe pizza dough or masa. If it gets sticky on the board, just add a little more flour. See right there, it's kind of sticky, so I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. And now I'm almost ready. And here is my baker's dough. You can make whatever you want with this baker's dough, but today I thought I'd make a little cat. So I'm gonna roll my baker's dough into a ball to represent the cat's body. And then I'm gonna take a piece for the head and roll it into a ball. And when you wanna add two pieces together, you wanna add a little bit of water to your finger to the place that you're going to join your pieces together, like so. You may even want to kind of add a little pressure to make sure that they stay. So here I have the body of my cat and its head. I'm gonna need some ears. So I could attach the ears or I could pinch the ears. I'm going to add a tail. For the tail, I'm going to roll out, kind of like if I was making a snake. I'm gonna gently apply pressure until it's the shape I like. And to add that tail, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. And I can move the tail around however I want. I'm gonna add some little cheeks to my cat's face. You can use a tool to create texture, maybe the fur of the cat, or maybe some whiskers. To harden your sculpture, you're going to bake it. Carefully pick up your sculpture from the cardboard and place it on a baker's tray. I like to put a piece of parchment paper down so it doesn't get too stuck to your baker's tray. Set your oven for about 275 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to cook your sculpture for about 45 minutes to an hour. If you have a bigger or thicker sculpture, you're going to cook it longer. If you have a smaller or thinner sculpture, you'll cook it less. 
It's been about an hour and I think my sculpture is all finished. I'm going to take it out of the oven now. Do make sure that an adult does this for you. After it's cooled, if you want, you can leave it as is or you can paint it. Alright artists, here it is. Now it's your turn. Happy creating!